Enable SSH on ESXi server for remote troubleshooting and file management. If you'd like to be able to access remotely ESXi server using the built-in root account, which is not recommended practice, because this is the account that has complete control over the entire system, you need to log into the server's direct console user interface and allow SSH access to the server. This is due to the fact that by default, the management console, also known as service console, no longer allows the root account to log in remotely with an SSH client and port 22 is closed. All right, first, Let's talk about why do we need Secure Shell or SSH enabled on ESXi server. The primary reason is to be able to remotely execute CLI commands, or basically speaking, to remotely manage your server from the command line. For example, say we've lost control over a virtual machine and we can't shut it down. We can use SSH to remotely log in as an ESXi server and execute a shutdown command from the command line. So, if this is the case, you need to enable SSH on the server first before you can actually run the command remotely. Now, reason number two. If you need to upload an ISO image onto ESXi server for the purpose of installing an operating system, inside your virtual machine, then you're going to need SSH. There is an alternative way of uploading ISO images, but we will talk about this alternative in the next movie. All right, so what does the SSH protocol has to do with files? Well, SSH file transfer protocol, also known as SFTP, allows you to access ESX ESXi files do file transfer and manage files. For example, you can delete or rename files. SFTP is an extension of the SSH protocol and it has been designed to provide secure file transfer capability. To upload files on ESXi server, you can use SFTP client such as WinSCP. We're going to show you how to upload ISO files within WinSCP in the next movie, so bear with me and we'll get to that part. Now, back to our main objective. How do we enable SSH? In order to enable SSH, we need to use a keyboard and monitor directly attached to our ESXi host, or we can use KVM controller if we're not sitting right in front of our server. For example, if your server is located at remote data center and you have no physical access to that server, a KVM controller is probably the best way to manage that server. If you're wondering, how can I manage my server with a KVM controller? Then I suggest, please watch the video working with KVM. Okay, let's go ahead and enable SSH. I already did open up my KVM console and because I'm not physically located at, at the data center and I need some sort of a remote way of controlling my server, I will be using KVM instead of real keyboard and monitor. The first thing that I'm going to do is to log in to the DCUI or the Direct Console User Interface of my ESXi host by pressing F2. And then I'm going to enter my username and password, and then I'm going to hit enter. To navigate the main menu, we can use the down arrow key on our keyboard to scroll down. So from the main menu, I'm going to use the down arrow key to select troubleshooting options. And then I will hit enter. Now, we went into Troubleshooting Options menu, and again, I will use the down arrow key to scroll down to Enable SSH. Now, notice on the right-hand side of my screen, it says SSH is disabled, right here. 
You see it says SSH is disabled. Now, what we want to do is, is we want to enable access to our server. We want to enable SSH access to our server. So we're going to change this to SSH is enabled. Just press enter and now SSH is enabled. From now on, we can use SSH client such as PuTTY or WinSCP to remotely access our ESXi server. But be aware, it does open up a security hole. So if you're concerned with the security of your servers, please do not change this in production environments. It is a best practice to have SSH disabled and temporarily have it enabled only when you do troubleshooting. In the next movie, I'm going to show you how to use SSH to run a command and also how to upload an ISO file to ESXi server and then use that ISO image to install our first virtual machine. Thank you.